Welcome to Photos and Travel, a show that introduces you to fascinating places around the world. Please welcome our host and tour guide, Jonathan Van Bilsen. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Photos and Travel, where we bring the world to your doorstep. In an earlier program, we visited Jerusalem and explored all of its splendor, especially in the old quarter of the city. There is, however, much, much more to Israel. And today we're going to visit its coastal areas, its villages, and its very rich history. Join me after these messages for a visit to the Holy Land. Thinking promotional to brand your organization? At PP Print, we can help with so much to offer. Just ask, we've got you covered. PP Print, where experience pays off. Planning your next travel destination is always fun, but don't forget to check with Travel Health Associates of Port Perry to learn what precautions are necessary for your destinations. Travel Health Associates of Port Perry is always ready to meet your travel needs. Israel lies directly on the Mediterranean Sea and has experienced turmoil since it was first created in 1948. Prior to that, the land was governed by the British, but when World War II ended, and the prosperity was slowly beginning to return to Europe, the Jewish people wanted to regain their homeland. Through the United Nations, the State of Israel was established. But this resulted in an ongoing dispute with the people who were already living in the area. I flew directly into Tel Aviv where I met my guide, Mehar, who showed me this incredible seaside city of nearly half a million people. Tel Aviv was founded in 1909 by Jewish residents as a modern housing estate on the outskirts of the ancient port city of Jaffa. Immigration by mostly Jewish refugees meant that the growth of Tel Aviv soon outpaced that of Jaffa, which had a majority Arab population at the time. I immediately noticed how clean and organized the city was. The ancient city of Jaffa, now part of Tel Aviv, dates back to 1500 BCE and is best known for its association with the biblical stories of Jonah, Solomon, and Saint Peter, whose church can be seen here. With its tall brick facade and towering bell tower, Saint Peter's church is the single largest and most distinctive building in old Jaffa. Leaving Jaffa, I headed north along the Mediterranean, stopping at the ancient city of Caesarea. The site, along with all of Judea, was awarded by Rome to Herod the Great in 30 BCE. The pagan city underwent vast changes under Herod, who renamed it Caesarea Maritima in honor of the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. When Judea became a Roman province in 6 CE, Caesarea Maritima replaced Jerusalem as its civilian and military capital and became the official residence of its governor, Prefect Pontius Pilate. Archaeological excavation continues at the palace and the Roman amphitheater is used today for concerts and performances. My next stop is inland and the ancient city of Tel Megiddo, which in Greek means Armageddon. The location is now a UNESCO heritage site and 26 layers of ruins have been unearthed. The biblical book of Revelation mentions the apocalyptic battle at the Mount of Megiddo and consequently Armageddon has become a byword for the end of the world. An Iron Age water system is also evident, with a 30 meter deep shaft and a 70 meter long tunnel dating back to the 9th century BCE, when the city was ruled by Ahab. I ventured through the narrow tunnel, which would have supplied residents of Megiddo with water from the nearby spring. Next, I headed to the biblical city of Nazareth, the largest city in the northern district of Israel. 
Nazareth is known as the Arab capital of Israel because the inhabitants are predominantly Arab citizens, of whom 70% are Muslim and 30% Christian. According to the Bible, it is also the location where Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel and told she would bear a son known as Jesus. This, the Basilica of the Annunciation, was built in 1969 on the site of a 4th century shrine to commemorate the event. In the 4th century, the mother of Emperor Constantine I, who had converted to Christianity, spent many years in Judea seeking proof of biblical legends. She established churches throughout the country in areas she deemed to be actual locations of events. There is, of course, no way of telling how accurate these locations are. Instead, they serve as a reminder of what Christians believe took place. According to Luke, the Annunciation took place in the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy with John the Baptist. Elizabeth, a relative of Mary, was in her 60s when she gave birth, and Mary stayed with her for three months leading up to the event. Mary was betrothed to Joseph, a neighbor, who was about five years older and this building is said to be the original site of his family's house. John the Baptist was born in Ein Karem, just outside of Jerusalem, about 150 kilometers from Nazareth, a good three-day donkey ride for Mary when she went to visit Elizabeth. When John the Baptist began his public ministry in 29 CE, Herod Antipas, son of Herod the Great, was 49 years old and had been ruling the Galilee area for 33 years. Pontius Pilate was a Roman procurator of all Judea and ruled over the small village where John the Baptist was born in 4 BC, the same year Herod the Great passed away. A short walk from where John the Baptist was born is a freshwater spring known as Mary Spring or the Fountain of the Virgin. Tradition has it that Mary quenched her thirst from this spring before ascending the hill to meet Elizabeth. The spring gives the village its name, from the Arabic Ein meaning spring and Karem meaning vineyard or olive grove. Built over the spring is a small abandoned mosque, another reminder that this was once an Arab village. Unfortunately, the water has become contaminated and is no longer safe to drink. Back in the Nazareth area, a visit to Cana, the wedding town, is a definite must. It is here Christians believe Christ's first miracle took place. While Jesus and his disciples attended a wedding, the wine ran out, perhaps because they had not been expected to be there. Mary turned to her son to overcome the embarrassment, but Christ was not concerned with the problem. After his mother's persistence, he turned six jars holding more than 550 liters of water into wine. The wedding church, built by the Franciscan Order of the Catholic Church, is dedicated to the miracle and many people are married or renew their vows at the wedding church. Whatever the reason for visiting, souvenir wines are a big hit with the tourists. Heading northeast from Nazareth to the city of Tiberias, I stayed at the Leonardo Plaza on the shores of the picturesque Sea of Galilee. This area is an attraction for Christian pilgrims who visit Israel to see the places where, according to the New Testament, Jesus performed many miracles. This area is also where the town of Capernaum is located. A small fishing village, Capernaum was established around 140 BCE. Located on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, it had a population of about 1,500. Archaeological excavations have revealed two ancient synagogues built one over the other, dating back to the late 4th century. This is the village where Peter the Apostle lived and Jesus stayed. Although the location of the actual house is not known, remnants of graffiti, which makes a reference to Christ, were found on the walls of a dwelling during the excavations in the 1960s. 
As this graffiti dates back to 100 CE, the building where it was located has been decreed as the official residence of St. Peter by the Catholic Church. To commemorate the site, a modern church was built above the excavated remains of the ancient house in 1990. The Church of the Primacy of St. Peter is a Franciscan church located on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee. It commemorates and allegedly marks the spot of Jesus' reinstatement of Peter as chief among the Apostles. The modern structure was built in 1933 and incorporates parts of an earlier 4th century church. Known as the Place of Coals, this name refers to an incident of Jesus' preparation of a meal for the Apostles, building a charcoal fire on which to cook the fish. The Mount of Beatitudes, believed to be the setting for Jesus' famous Sermon of the Mount, is one of the most beautifully serene places in the Holy Land. The Beatitudes are eight blessings recounted by Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Each is a proverb-like proclamation without narrative, such as, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The exact site of the Sermon on the Mount is unknown, but pilgrims commemorate the event at the eight-sided Church of the Beatitudes, built by the Catholic Church and maintained by the Sisters of Egypt. The Mount of Beatitudes is also understood to be the place where Jesus met his apostles after his resurrection and commissioned them to make disciples of all nations. Zephat, located north of the Sea of Galilee, was, according to legend, founded by a son of Noah after the Great Flood. There's no evidence to support this, and the modern city dates back to the 12th century. During the 1940s, Zafat's population consisted of about 12,000 Arabs and 1,700 Jews. During the 1990s and early 2000s, the town accepted thousands of Russians and Ethiopian Jewish immigrants, and now the population has shifted, where 90% of the residents are Jewish. Needless to say, this causes friction amongst the inhabitants. The Golan Heights is an 1800 square kilometer area bordering Israel and Syria. Prior to 1967, it belonged to Syria, but it was a concern to Israel because from the top of the ridge, it was easy to attack the cities below. During the war of 1967, Israel captured the Golan Heights. In 1973, Syria led an attack to reclaim much of Golan. However, they were pushed back by an Israeli counterattack. Beth Sheehan in the Northern District of Israel has played an important role in history due to its geographic location at the junction of the Jordan River Valley and the Jezreel Valley. In the biblical account of the battle of the Israelites against the Philistines, the bodies of King Saul and his three sons were hung on the walls of Beth Sheehan. In Roman times, it was the leading city of the Decapolis, a group of ten cities on the eastern frontier of the Roman Empire. Active excavation by archaeologists continues to take place and has unearthed many historic finds. The excavations have revealed no less than 18 successive ancient towns, making Beth Sheehan one of the most spectacular Roman and Byzantine sites in Israel. The modern-day city lies in a valley surrounded on three sides by Palestine, continuing to make it a strategic locale. The state of Palestine has been recognized by the United Nations, but it's under the protection of Israel, much to the dismay of its residents. One of Christianity's most famous sites, Bethlehem, considered to be the birthplace of Christ, lies deep within its borders. After these messages, we'll trek across the border into Palestine and visit the city known as the origin of Christianity. Don't feel like spending an hour in the grocery store? With PC Express, you don't have to. Simply download the app, choose your groceries, and the staff at Voss's Independent Grocer in Port Perry will have it ready for you to pick up. Come to Voss's, your independent grocer. Welcome back. Before we head to Bethlehem, we should take a quick look at Jerusalem. As I mentioned earlier, we did an entire show on this city several months ago. 
but as it's an integral part of Israel's history, we'll make a quick stop there before venturing on to Palestine. Jerusalem lies nearly in the center of the country and has a population of approximately 900,000 inhabitants. There are four main entrances to the old city of Jerusalem. The main one is the Jaffa Gate, which was built by Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent in 1538. To find your way through old Jerusalem's intricate maze of shops and outdoor markets in search of memorable souvenirs at reasonable prices is an uneasy task requiring insider knowledge. A guide certainly comes in handy. The four sections of the Old City are home to Armenians, Jews, Muslims and Christians. The entrance to the Muslim quarter is heavily guarded, but once inside it's very safe to wander around the narrow streets and enjoy the shops. While most residents of Jerusalem in the 19th century preferred to live near members of their own community, today there are Muslims living in the Jewish quarter and Jews living in the Muslim quarter. The Western Wall or Wailing Wall is known in Islam as the Burak Wall. It was originally erected as part of the expansion of the Second Jewish Temple begun by Herod the Great. The Western Wall is considered holy due to its connection to the Temple Mount. The Wall is the holiest place where Jews are permitted to pray, though the holiest site in the Jewish faith lies behind it, in the Muslim quarter under the Dome of the Rock. There is a much publicized practice of placing slips of paper containing written prayers into the crevices of the wall. Twice a year the notes are collected and buried on Jerusalem's Mount of Olives. The area where people can pray is divided to separate men and women to conform with various elements of Halakha, the collective body of Jewish religious laws derived from the Torah. Halakha is based on the biblical commandments. The Via Dolorosa is believed to be the actual path Jesus walked to Mount Calvary. The 14 Stations of the Cross, also known as the Way of Sorrows, refers to a series of events depicting Jesus Christ on the day of his crucifixion. The object of the stations is to help the Christian faithful make a spiritual pilgrimage through contemplation of the Passion of Christ. There are numerous places such as this one claiming to be part of the original route However, none have ever been authenticated. The last four stations of the Via Dolorosa, representing the final episodes of the Passion of Jesus, are actually inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, a major Christian pilgrimage destination since its creation in the 4th century. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre lies deep within the Christian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem. The entrance courtyard is always filled with worshippers wishing to enter. The church contains, according to traditions dating back to at least the 4th century, the two holiest sites in Christianity, the site where Jesus was crucified at a place known as Calvary, and Jesus' empty tomb where he is said to have been buried and resurrected. This stone where Jesus was laid in preparation for his burial is accessible although its authenticity is questioned by scholars. Several processions take place daily around the chapel where the burial place has been deemed to exist. Lineups to enter the tomb can be as long as two hours, but for devout Christians, it's well worth the wait. This, the Mount of Calvary and the site of the crucifixion, is located at the other end of the church. The modern city of Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Jerusalem's history dates back 5,000 years. According to the Bible, King David conquered the city from the Jebusites and established it as the capital of the United Kingdom of Israel, around 1000 BCE. Located a short drive from the old city of Jerusalem is the Garden of Gethsemane, where, according to the four Gospels of the New Testament, Jesus underwent the agony and was arrested the night before his crucifixion. 
Built in 1924 on the traditional site of the Garden of Gethsemane, the Basilica of the Agony enshrines a section of bedrock identified as the place where Jesus prayed alone in the garden on the night of his arrest. There are several small olive groves on church property and are identified as part of the biblical Gethsemane. In 2012, carbon dating revealed some of the trees in the garden date back more than 1,000 years. Palestine is a small region of land that has played a prominent role in the ancient and modern history of the Middle East. The history of Palestine has been marked by frequent political conflict and violent land seizures because of its importance to several major world religions and because Palestine sits at a valuable geographic crossroads between Africa and Asia. Today, Palestine theoretically includes the West Bank, a territory that sits between modern-day Israel and Jordan, and the Gaza Strip, which borders modern-day Israel and Egypt. However, control over this region is a complex and evolving situation. There is no international consensus concerning the borders, and many areas claimed by Palestinians have been occupied by Israelis for years. Tourism certainly plays a major part in the administration of the baptismal site. From renting robes to securing seats and bleachers, Christians line up to undergo a baptism ritual in the same river John the Baptist christened Christ. Of course, the actual location of the famous event is a mystery. But as my guide explained, John the Baptist lived here, as did Christ. And this is, after all, the River Jordan, albeit much narrower than I imagined. Jordan claims ownership of the baptismal site, but you can see here tourism in Israel certainly dominates the sparse Jordanian platform across the river. Israel has about 750,000 tourists who visit this site annually, compared with Jordan's 250,000. The Dead Sea is one of the most amazing natural wonders I've ever seen. It is a salt lake bordered by Jordan to the east and Israel and the West Bank to the west. It lies in the Jordan Rift Valley, and its main tributary is the Jordan River. Its surface and shores are 430 meters or 1400 feet below sea level, Earth's lowest elevation on land. My next stop in Palestine is the ancient town of Jericho, where for six days Joshua marched his troops around the city blowing ram's horns. On the seventh day, the noise caused the wall to collapse. Today the walls are gone, but it did not stop Mayor, my guide, from driving around the traffic circle seven times, honking the car's horn. It was also my opportunity to meet one of the local residents in this self-proclaimed oldest city in the world. Currently, the area around Jericho is the center of much controversy as excavations have discovered 20 different civilizations dating back 11,000 years, but none represented the Israelites. It is for this reason many Christian tour groups are now avoiding the city. The Christian Gospels state that Jesus passed through Jericho and healed blind beggars and inspired a local tax collector to repent of his dishonest practices. One of the most historic locations on Earth is Qumran and the caves where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered. The scrolls are ancient Jewish religious manuscripts that were found in the Qumran caves by a young shepherd who found a clay pot after throwing pebbles into one of the caves. Researchers have assembled a collection of 981 different manuscripts discovered in 1946 and 1956 from 11 different caves. Scholarly consensus dates these scrolls from the last three centuries BCE and the first century CE. The texts have historical, religious, and linguistic significance because they include the second oldest known surviving manuscripts of works later included in the Hebrew Bible. The mountain where the fortress of Masada sits is accessible by cable car. There's also a path, but I left that for the younger generation. Herod the Great built two palaces for himself on the mountain and fortified Masada between 37 and 31 BCE. 
According to Titus Josephus, a first century historian, the siege of Masada by Roman troops from 73 to 74 CE at the end of the First Jewish-Roman War ended in the mass suicide of 960 Zakari rebels who were hiding there. Josephus was born in Jerusalem and defected to the Roman side when things were going badly for the Jews. His Jewish wars manuscripts were flowery, although questionably accurate. Some say he never set foot in Masada. The ramps built by the Roman soldiers over the course of a year are still visible, and you can imagine the shock when they finally breached the walls and found all the inhabitants had committed suicide. My last stop in this visit to Israel is the little town of Bethlehem. Although with 30,000 people, it's not so little. The main reason people visit Bethlehem is of course to see the birthplace of Christ. After a short walk through Nativity Square, you enter the Church of the Nativity, a beautiful basilica and the oldest complete church in the Christian world. It was built by the Emperor Justinian in the 6th century and replaced the original church of Constantine the Great, built over the cave venerated as Christ's birthplace and dedicated in AD 339. For many centuries, houses would have caves underneath where livestock and supplies were stored. When Joseph and Mary arrived in Bethlehem, there was little hotel space available because of the census that was taking place. They were offered shelter in one of the caves beneath the houses. Access is very difficult as the architects of the church wanted to deter looters and vandals. Because Bethlehem is nowhere near as busy as Jerusalem, strolling through the old city is very enjoyable especially considering I was hungry and there was lots of food to be had. I'm really glad I chose Bethlehem for my final stop in Israel, as it certainly has a historic element second to none. Israel is a fascinating country, and a visit there is well worth the trip. Both the recent history and the ancient past are filled with amazing facts many of them pertaining to the major religions of the world. Visiting Israel is an adventure and an opportunity to discover the history of the Muslim, Christian, and Jewish faiths. For Photos and Travel, I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen. It's been my pleasure to be your tour guide today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. If you like this program, please click the subscribe button and you'll never miss an episode. Want to know what's happening in Skugog? News and lifestyle, changes in business, and all the entertainment information you'll ever need. Plus, each edition has a new Photos and Travel article. Look for your next copy in your mailbox.